Oh yes, here we are. It's Royal Ascot time, baby. This is our Royal Ascot preview. Welcome along to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel. We've got a fantastic five days of Ascot next week. Jack and I can't wait to get stuck into what's going to be just a superb festival. The sun is out. It's going to be warm and looking forward to hopefully landing a few winners as well. Before I bring Jack in, I just want to say all the uh, support we've had on the anti-post video for Royal Ascot has been excellent. Keep subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We are absolutely loving the support you're giving us throughout the flat season, so do continue to do so. Jack, a fantastic week coming up. Really looking forward to it. Ah, There's not much more to say. No, there isn't actually. Look, it's a fantastic week, isn't it? I think it's a relatively tricky week from a punting point of view, so I think Hopefully we'll be able to land a couple of big prize winners, but I think smaller stakes, bigger prizes, and hope for a couple of winners. Absolutely. I think one thing I was speaking last night on the Royal Ascot previews and saying, I think the anti-post prize you can get for Royal Ascot are much, much fairer to the likes of Cheltenham. You can find horses at big prices in the anti-post book. I'm sure a lot of people, let, let us know in the comments if you have had any horses at big prices for Royal Ascot. Now this is coming in a two-part series. We're going to have uh, the first part coming to you while you're watching it now, and, and the second part will be released 24 hours later, so you can tune into that. So we'll be previewing the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and then our second part will be previewing the Friday and the Saturday cards. And we kick off with the opening race of the meeting. It's the Queen Anne Stakes, a group one over a mile. And your current best odds are Modern Game 7-4 in Spiral 15-8. Native Trail well supported after a few comments from Charlie Appy at 6-1. Chindit 12 to 1, Mutis Sarbeck 16 to 1, Light Infantry 25 to 1, Cash 25 to 1, and 28 to 1, and bigger the rest. Um, the one thing I'll say, Jack, this is kind of from a couple of weeks back now, been a two horse race, or people have made it a two horse race. I think the comments from Appleby about Native Trail have kind of brought him into the picture, but do you see it between the top of the market here? I think it has to be. Um, look, Modern Games is an out and out group one miler, isn't he? Inspire, I think probably has a question mark of course did bounce back in good style last year it was relatively disappointing though on the final day at ascot but then again i think it's one of those those races where yes the top two are very far clear of the rest but then again there could be something to come and fill that i mean th something has to come and fill that third place and maybe able to to actually bump a bit higher so i think you kind of have to be looking for that the one for me is um actually light infantry um who i just think has been crying out for a, for a quick mile I know this is quite a stiff mile, but I think this will actually suit. I mean, he was second, of course, to Amat last time out at Longstrop. I don't think the form of that's actually up to too much. But it was the second in the Jacques Lemoyer to inspire when I think he actually should have won last year that really made me think he is still a top-class miler. I know he was fancied on seasonal reappearance for the, uh, for the 2000 Guineas when he was only ninth. And then, of course, went off in the Golden Eagle um, over in Australia as fa a joint favourite with Jamie Spencer on board that day. He was seventh in the, in the lock inch, of course, beaten three and three-quarter lengths behind modern games. But he was actually staying on uh, in relatively uh, relatively decent style. It was a respectable run. I think he, was, he recorded the second fastest sectional behind modern games. So I think he could put his best foot forward. Jamie Spencer will be taking the ride again. He's only rated one pound. Um, inferior to modern games and he's the same price as cash and he's raised at 13 pound bigger than cash there's still a lot of hype around cash i think it's fair to say so light infantry will be the one for me at 25 to 1 each way okay light infantry 25 to 1 for jack i mean if i'm talking about the horse at the top of the market here i'd probably be in spiral look she's very talented on a day we all know that and she probably is on a day the best horse in this field i just couldn't really back her at 15 to 8 with that inconsistency um, and I'd happily go and let her win this. I've actually looked at one at a price as well, and the horse would be triple time for the Kevin Ryan yard, um, currently 28 to 1. But go back and look at this horse, very unexposed four year old, this horse, and was really rapidly improving last season. Like looked like a horse that had taken a massive step forward, won the superior mile at Haydock, and then ran in the Wildenstein on, on horrible going for this horse. And, and we didn't see this horse at its best. Erevan actually won the race, who's, who's not turning up here, unfortunately. But um, I've got a feeling this horse is going to continue to step forward. Kevin Ryan was very, very bullish about this horse when, when he was a three-year-old and said that you know he could be a very talented horse and that they had to miss the guineas, I believe, with this horse. But they were very confident going into a race like that, Brian. I have this feeling that he could be a, a fair, fair price. We have seen some big shocks in this race in the last few years, so you've got to look out for horses at big prices. So Jack will be of light infantry, 25-1, to 1, and I'm going to make a case for triple time at 28-1. to 1. 
Let's move on to the first two-year-old race that we'll be covering over the two-part series here. And it's the 305, which is the six furlong Coventry Stakes, Group 2, like I say, for the two-year-olds. And Asadna is the 11-4 to 4 joint favourite with River Tiber here. Then we have Give Me the Beat Boys, 10-1. to 1. Fandom, 12-1. to 1. Unquestionable is also 12-1. to 1. 14 to 1 Buccaneero Fuerte and 16 to 1 about the rest of them. Um, again, this has turned into a two horse race as well. Jack potentially a Sadner putting up this huge time. I was, uh, like I said, I was at a preview evening last night and they were saying the time this horse put up was almost the level of a Group 1 three year old in terms of how good it was. And the one thing that was said was this horse can only go backwards, which is always an interesting comment, but can that horse replicate that again? If replicating what that horse did last time out, Jet, do you think this horse wins? Yes, 100%. Um, I think it was only one other two-year-old in the last 15, 20 years who'd recorded a, a, a time figure anywhere near that, and that was at Ali before going on to win the Norfolk. So I think Asadna probably is the one to beat. But look, it's two-year-old racing. You're looking at juveniles here. Everything can improve 10, 15 pounds. There's one usually that gets away from you and ends up bolting up at 16 to 1. You look at Bradsell last year or, or the likes of some of the Coventry winners who have gone and bolted up and you think, why have, why have I not backed it? Look, I'm not really going to be getting involved at 11 to 4 with either River Tiber or Asadna. I think Asadna is the one to beat. I see a lot of money's also come for Give Me the Beat, uh, give me the beat Boys, who of course won a group event last time out. But the one for me actually is at a bit of a price. It's Chief Mancanto for um, Charlie Hills, who won last time out at Windsor in relatively decent style, cost 50 grand as a yearling. Actually third since Sky Wizard has come out and pretty much bolted up at Salisbury last time out. I was watching that race. Sky Wizard did it pretty easily. I wouldn't be surprised if Chief Mancanto could take a step forward. Um, Dan was a, a winner as a juvenile over six furlongs, so clearly we'll be able to hopefully build on that as a two-year-old. And of course, Charlie Hills, I know Kieran Schumacher already jocked up, so if the, if the front two don't build on their promising first First one or two outings, I think Chief Mancato could be there to pick up the pieces. Cool, two twenty-five to one in the first two races we preview from Jack. There, um, I like. I was very impressed with Sadden. Do not get me wrong, but I said in our anti-post preview for Royal Ascot, the River Tiber, that horse ran like it showed that this horse never wanted to go over five furlongs again. As soon as this horse steps up to six, you're going to see a completely different horse. And he was very talented over five, but I've got a feeling we could see something quite special from River Tiber over six. I really do. I think 11 to four is a really fair price. He could be one of Aiden's best two-year-olds. And I've got a feeling he's a, a bit of a special horse, a sadner. I do agree with the comments in the fact that he may not be able to replicate exactly what he did time-wise. It was very, very impressive. And for a horse to do that twice, if he can do that, he'd be a very, very special horse moving forward. But, yeah, I'm going to take River Tiber. Aidan O'Brien, you've got to do it this week. He's going to have plenty of winners, I'd imagine. And 11-4, to four, I think, about River Tiber stepping up to six furlong. And the Coventry will be my selection. Now let's move on to the 340 on Tuesday. It's the King's Stand stake to group one over five furlongs here. And Highfield Princess tops the market at five to two. Cool and Gatter, the Australian Raider, is four to one. Dramatised is six to one. Manacan, well tipped up on a few preview evenings, eight to one. Cannonball, ten to one. And then 20 to one. And bigger about the rest of them in here. Um... It's not a race I really... I've never actually really liked the King Stand Stakes as a betting proposition. It's a great watch. Obviously, what happened last year with um, Nature Strip was incredible. But, like, I've looked at this and calling Gatter's fascinating. How much can you really take from watching a few of the replays there? I'm not too sure. I think Manacan may be slightly overpriced, but the price has gone on that horse after a few have been putting this horse up at preview evenings. But... I'd potentially give Twilight Gleaming a chance if there was one at a price, and it'd be the Wesley Ward runner, Twilight Gleaming, who has been ever so consistent. Obviously, won her as a juvenile at the Breeders' Cup in really impressive style. Went to the Breeders' Cup uh, this, no, sorry, last season and got beaten by Caravel, who's a very, very good horse and since come out and won a couple of races. So I think just the fact that this horse has finished second over this trip at Royal Ascot before. I've got a feeling we could see another impressive display. I read all these juniors on board. I think 20 to 1 just might be a bit overpriced. It's not a race I'm going to be going absolutely nuts in, but I just think I'd have a small each way play. Twilight Gleaming 20 to 1. Jack Highfield Princess, it sounds like they're going to try and do the double by doing this and then potentially going to the race on Saturday, the sprint, the um, whatever, the Platinum Jubilee, whatever you want to call it. It's got two names. But that is the one that Look, tops the market and has been very impressive. She's absolutely loved balls. It's mad the story with this horse and how much she stepped forward. But what do we make of this? I think you can make a case for about 10 in here, yeah. I reckon. Um, 
You've got Highfield Princess, the, who's turning into somewhat of a veteran now, the top-class sprinter, very consistent. You've got the Australian Raiders coming over. You've got Dramatized, the young, aesthetically pleasing on paper. Philly, who's getting all the way. You've got Manakam with the Frankie factor as well. I think it's an absolute minefield, to tell you the truth. Um, I also landed on Twilight Gleaming. Um, mm. I completely, as I completely echo your sentiment there, of course, has the form over course and distance in the Queen Mary. Don't get me wrong, that Queen Mary was absolutely horrendous looking back at the mm -hmm. form. It was uh, pretty, pretty horrible, which quick Susie won. But she can prove she handles um, the course and distance. She actually recorded her best um, speed figure last time out, which was nice to see over here in a listing contest. But look, she went on to win the juvenile turf sprint as you said beating go bears go by who by who is by no who uh, means a, a bad sprinter that's for sure so she'd be my first one and also equilateral i know he's eight years old but william buick's dropped up now and i was actually having a look through equilateral he's got to have some of the best he's got to have some of the best jockeys in the world sit on him he's had pj mcdonald he's had james mcdonald he's had ryan moore he's had oshie murphy colin keen james Dore, william buick frankie Latore, andrea azzini kieran schumark jim crowley i mean absolutely fantastic to have all those on him but he still is very consistent at the age of eight isn't he he was second in the temple stakes drawn a little bit different to dramatize and then second to regional rooms on the near side regional was on the far side last time out at haydock as well both of frankie on board look i'm not sure he's going to be good enough to win it he was fifth in this last year and then second in it back in 2020 but he could be able to sneak a place i'm sure you'd be able to get four maybe even five places on the day he's a big price at 40 to one so equal actual could run into the frame of twilight gleaming yeah look jack and i are both kind of in agreement in the fact that this isn't the the best punting race it's an excellent viewing uh, uh, and a great watch and might be one for sort of small each way play so Jack giving a mention for Equilateral, and we're both giving a, a good mention for Twilight Gleaming in the King's Stand. On to the final race we'll preview on the Tuesday. It's the 4.20, which is the St. James's Palace Stakes. This is over a mile for the three-year-olds, and you may want to argue with me, but I think this is the race of the week. Chaldean, 2-1. to one. Paddington, 2-1. to one. Cicero's Gift is 4-1. to one. Mustabshire is 7-1. to one. Isaac Shelby, 9-1. to one. Royal Scotsman, 14-1. to one. Al Riffa. 28 to 1. That's a fascinating one in here. And 40 to 1 and bigger about the rest of them. Um, the reason I say this is the race of the week is because you're testing the form, really, of the English, Irish and French 2,000 guineas. Isaac Shelby kind of representing the French in terms of the, the second place in that. And Brian Mee, and it'd be some story for him to have a, a winner at Royal Ascot once again. And I think looking at this race, Cicero's gift has been too well backed, too well supported that that is not a prize. 4 to 1 is, is far too skinny. I think Paddington may be the better horse out of the, the English and Irish Guineas uh, winners. And I've landed on a horse that you really like, Jack, and, and I, I completely agree. And I'll let you make the case. But I think Miss Stabshire is a really good bet in here at 7-1. to one. This horse, just looks, he's taking massive step forward and he's improving run from run, isn't he? Um, and I just have a feeling at the price is the fact he's 7-1. to one, He isn't each way bets enough and you're getting free place. If he places, you're going to get your money back. But looking at the price of some of these horses, I'd rather back Miss Stabshire to run into the money and potentially cause a, a small upset and win the St. James's Palace. Jack, make the case for Miss Stabshire. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Mostabshire. This is, I completely agree, this is the race of the week. Um, mm. I've toed and froed here. I thought Cicero's gift was a great bet at 8-1. to one. Now I think he's an absolutely stinking, horrible bet at 7-2 to two with the ground. And, um, of course, as quick as it is, I know we've got unsettled weather conditions. I can't see the ground getting on the slow side like it was at Goodwood. He's got a big stride, big knee action. We'll love a bit of give in the ground. Paddington and Cal Caldean, I'll come on to them in a second. But Mostabshire, yeah, I still think he's a decent bet, to be fair. At 7-1, to one, he was well fancied in the Craven of course one on debut didn't really um, give, a, give a good account on debut but then absolutely hacked up last time out of York winning by five lengths beating Ziriab who's come out and won since Katab who was actually second to passenger on debut which really I don't think is a bad piece of form behind there was New Business as well who was fourth who's since come out and won I think it's a good piece of form look he made all from the front he dictated he could be tough to tough to catch if that's the idea in my head he is kind of the idea of the Sussex Stakes winner at this moment in time as well. I know he's 33 to 1 for the Sussex Stakes. I've taken a bit of that, but I also think he is still a decent bet here at 7 to 1 in the St. James's Palace. Chaldean's probably the one where I've really toed and froed. I mean, on Twitter the other the other day, I'd probably put him up as the lay of the meeting at 7 to 4. But there's a price to lay there's a, there's a price to lay and a price to back every single horse. And if he does get to 5 to 2, I'd probably say he's actually a backable price, you know. Um, I'd probably rather back him at 5-2 to two than I would Paddington or Cicero's gift, okay. that's for sure. 
Um, but for me, of course, he won the Dewhurst on quick ground. I think everyone's crabbing that 2000 guineas form because it was on soft ground, but we can see he is a decent mile. And look, he beat Royal Scotsman and Nostrum in the Dewhurst. Nostrum hasn't been seen since, but I know he's been working well and he's back training in good, and he's in good, um, in good order. So I do think Caldean is actually the one to beat. I do think if he if he drifts to five to two, I think that is a backable prize. Paddington, I can't really have as much as you, Sam, if I'm being too honest. I'm, I don't know if the, the Irish 2000 guineas is too much of a good piece of form as the as the, the English equivalent is. So Sarah's gift, as I said, I think, yes, he was very impressive last time out. Could take a massive step forward, could go and win this. Um, luckily, I've backed him and supposed, but ugh, seven to two, come on. Come on, you're up against two two classic uh, two classic winners here in Isaac Shelby. Come on, that is that is too short. He's he's definitely the hype horse in the race. But for me, it'd be Mostabshire and Chaldean. I think is probably the one to beat. But Mostabshire each way. I've got to I've got to it finally. But it'd be Mostabshire for me. Yeah, no, Mostabshire definitely the one. Like I said, the price is seven to one. Is a really fair price in here about this horse, and it is a very hot field. Like Jack and I say, it looks like it's the race of the week. Being totally honest and. You look at the field, it is so, so strong. Even Al Riffa, like this horse, you've got to remember with Al Riffa, this horse was the 5-4 to four anti-post favourite for an Irish 2000 guineas. Didn't run in that race, but it shows how good potentially they think he is. And it might be, well, it will be a really tough ask if he does turn up here first time out for the season. But you never know, he could have so much ability and he could be the, the fly in the ointment. So a really fascinating race. Jack would be with Caldean at the top of the market. He's going to put up Mustabshire and I would be potentially with Paddington and Mustabshire in the St. James's. Palace. Let's move on to Wednesday, shall we? And we kick things off with a group two for the Phillies and their two year olds, and it is the Queen Mary Stakes. And the current betting is Born to Rock at 9 to 2, Beautiful Diamond 5 to 1, Ocean Mermaid 10 to 1, Crimson Advocate is 10 to 1, Midnight Fair also 10 to 1, Classic Flower 10s, Got to Love a Grade 10s, 12 to 1, about a load of others in here. Um, this is always an open looking race. Now, I look at this race and try and find a bit of value because I don't necessarily think you have to have a horse who's gone on a massive winning streak to end up winning this. And I messaged you, Jack, after Midnight Affair won the Hillary Nieder at uh, Beverly um, and said that, you know, Flora of Bermuda was so unlucky, currently 20 to 1 in the market. And Oshin rode the horse in the Hillary Nieder. And I messaged him the day after and I said, Oshin, like, what's the plan with Flora of Bermuda? Is the plan now to go to the Queen Mary? I thought she was awfully unlucky. And he just said to me, this horse should have won that day. And, and I think, I actually agree. I think this horse would have won quite cosily as well. Um, I think she's taking major strides forwards. Oshin won't be aboard this horse from what he says because Out of the Stars is running currently 20 to 1 as well. And that's a Qatar horse. So he'll be jocked up on this. But he said Flora Bermuda has a really, really good chance. I think she'd appreciate a, a big field in here. Um, and I think she'll outrun her odds. I don't know who will be jocked up. But someone like Probert, you'd absolutely love to see him aboard. Um, and I think each way price in here, like I say, an open field is very good. The one horse that has been mentioned at a preview, and I'm not going to put this up, but I want to give the info out, is Sy Name. Uh, not Surname, Sy Name, who's currently 12 to 1 as American Raider. But a lot of hype around this horse for a trainer who isn't Wesley Ward from America. But apparently if it was trained by Wesley Ward, would be very, very short in this market. So um, there is a lot of hype around this horse. Apparently it's a bit of a rocket. So... I'm not going to be putting this horse up. I don't like putting horses solely up based on information. But, yeah, a, lot, a lot's been said about this sire name at 12 to 1. But I'll be a floor of Bermuda with a small each way play, Jack and the Queen Mary. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm probably actually going to be with the American Raider. Um, as you said, I, you, you mentioned sire names to me. I had a little watch back. I was actually quite impressed. And it did look like one of those, if it was traded by Wesley Ward, she'd probably be half the price. Look, it's a very tricky race, the Queen Mary. don't think I've ever found a winner over the Queen Mary, to be honest. I don't really like it as a race. I think it's a great a great learning race, of course, dramatised last year, but at the same time, it's a very, very tricky punting race to go from usually just the one run uh, for these fillies. Usually something takes a massive step forward in these juvenile contests, and I'm hoping it's going to be the American Raider sign-in who's going to come over, was quick out the gate, stayed on well in good style. Hopefully, we'll be able to take a step forward. We'll love the quick ground. And yeah, a 12-1 to 1 will be my each-way play. There you go. There's a case made for Sirename and, and there is a little bit of information behind it from myself that I've heard from a few evenings. So, yeah, look, Sirename 12 to 1 looks a fair, fair each way playing here. Um, I'll probably end up playing that on the day, but I am going to be a floor of Bermuda as my main selection at 20 to 1. Let's go on to a, um, what have we got next? We've got a group 2 for the Phillies and Mares. It's the Duke of Cambridge stakes over a mile at 340. 
Um, and looking at the market currently, Jumbly is the 9 4 favourite, Laurel 4 to 1, Prosperous Voice 6 to 1, Inspiro 8 to 1 at the time of recording. Obviously, we're waiting for decks for the Wednesday at the time of recording. Up above the curves, 8 to 1, Just Beautiful is 9 to 1, Honey Girl and Grand Dam 14 to 1, and 16 to 1 and bigger. About the rest in here, this is a race I genuinely, genuinely don't like. Like, I don't think I've ever had a, a strong say in the Duke of Cambridge Stakes. I don't think I've ever had a strong bet in the Duke of Cambridge Stakes. And it's a race I will completely leave alone. But I imagine you've got something, Jack. Yeah, I do. This race, I actually do fancy one. Um, at 20 to 1, again, big prices. It's a very, very simple formula for me. This Royal Ascot, try and find a couple of big price winners and that'll pay for your week. Um, and it will be Potter Pover at 20 to 1, who I think just has a massive air of Indie Angel from two years ago for Cheveley Park, under the radar, loves a quick round, loves the mile, and then goes and wins at a big price. I think Indie Angel won at 25 to 1 a couple of years ago. It kind of stinks of that to me. I think she'll absolutely love the quick ground. Look, when she won and beat Grand Dam last year at Sandown, she looked like a really top-class filly in the Atalanta. I thought she looked like almost a Group 1 filly. Didn't really build on that. Was only beaten two lengths by Muta Sabe at Newmarket. But she's just shown so much ability, even from her debut. And she absolutely hacked up at Chelmsford on her third run, went to the coronation. And it was just bottomless ground. I actually fancied her before the heavens open that day. Um, but I just think on quick ground, look, she didn't give too much of a, a good account at Epsom when, when fifth and sixth behind Prosperous Voyage was only beaten a couple of lengths that day. Prosperous Voyage, I think, is the third of the price. So Ryan Moore was on board that day. Ryan Moore, of course, won't be on board um, in this contest. I just can't really have Jumbly. I'm not a big I'm not a big Jumbly fan. Uh, Jumbly fan. Got to be honest, I think Laura was probably the one to beat for the John Thady Gosden team, of course, was well backed for the lock ins but for me I think Potter Pover actually could have a decent each way place uh, decent each way claims at twenty to one. Potter Pover twenty to one for Jack. I mean looking at the field I should probably have a say on it and the one that I think could be a price could be last year's Sandrian winner is Heredia who I've put up before um I think this season and this also love quick going. You got to remember one in a big field at Ascot last season in a handicap and absolutely slushed up, um, and was very very impressive. The form of this horse this season has actually been fairly strong. It's got the the likes of Azure Blue in there. He obviously won a Group Two at York. It, there is strong form there. I think thirty three to one may be slightly overpriced in a big field for the Duke of Cambridge. So I'll have a look at the race on the day probably, but I, I probably wouldn't be having a bet in it. So I will be leaving that alone. Let's move on to a race that I'll definitely be having a bet on, which will be the Prince of Wales' stakes. Um, and this is a Group 1 over a mile and a quarter, 4.20 on the Wednesday. Luxembourg, 2-1. to one. Adar 9-4. to four. My Prospero, or My Prospero, is 7-2. to two. Desert Crown won't be going in here, but some bookmakers still have him priced up for some reason. Bay Bridge is 11-2. to two. Sim Camille is 16-1 to one and 25-1. to one. And bigger the rest. And Jack, I know you. We, we're both big fans of My Prospero, um, and I think he is still a bet, probably at seven to two. I think he's a, a fair bet. He's a very strong field. But I came down. I looked through this race all of yesterday evening, and I came down. I can't believe the price of Sim Camille in here. I really cannot believe it. Sixteen to one. He may not be quite as good as some of the horses at the top of the market, but he shouldn't be sixteen to one. He's a single figure odds horse for sure in here. Like this horse here, look, he won at Chanty last time. I was actually out at Chanty in the Grand Prix de Chanty, and he led from the front and made all and, and did it in really good style. But prior to that, he was second in the Ganet behind Iristine, who he had previously beat prior to that anyway. But he has some really strong form. He stays a mile and a half, and in a race like this, where if they do go off at a quick pace, you need a horse that, that can get a mile and a half. And I can either see him trying to make all and, you know, see if he can catch the rest of them out or he could just sit behind a fast pace and and come late i think 16 to 1 about a horse who looks like he's improving he's probably got plans to go to australia later this year and, and race out there but he is a really talented horse he's not a 16 to 1 shot when there's three places i'll be back in this horse each way i think my prospero is the most likely winner but i can't be having sim camille 16 to 1 i think that's far far too big jack what about yourself um yeah look I'm, i mean i've Managed to put up my Prospero twice this year so far, and suppose in our and suppose flat season at twelve to one, and then again in our Ascot and suppose <laughs> preview uh, eight to one. So look, he is definitely my strongest and suppose fancy, um, strongest probably fancy for 
uh, a wonderful struggle expansion for Royal Ascot. I think he's been crying out for this mile and a quarter trip. He showed that in the lock in. He ran a great race in the lock in. I really didn't think he was going to finish as close as fourth. He was pretty much third that day. But look, I think the step up to a mile and a quarter, we saw, we saw it suited uh, in the champion stakes. Uh, I think he's just oozed his class. I really do. I, I can't really see him being outside. The top three here, I think he handles all kinds of ground. I mean, he showed how versatile he is with regards to trip when he was fourth in the lock I think the step up and trips can be absolutely perfect. But look, when you got the likes of Luxembourg and, uh, and Adeo and even Bay Bridge up there, I mean, you do you do think this is probably that uh, this is up there with the best race of the week as well. Mm -hmm. If Desert Crown is there, I'd say it's definitely the best race of the week. Probably maybe in terms of my excitement for it, I'd say it's probably just behind St James's Palace. But hey, look, you got Luxembourg and Adeo both fine for favouritism. Luxembourg was very impressed with getting the better of Bay Bridge last time out. I probably think you'll actually be able to confirm that form, but at the same time, I don't think there should be a, a, a bigger gap in prices there is in the market. Bay Bridge, it, it, it hurts me not to be with Bay Bridge when he goes and wins because I absolutely love him. It happened in the Champion Stakes last year. It would hurt me if it happened again here. In this, a day, of course, the Derby win. I don't think the ground would be too much of an issue. But then again, I don't think a mile and a quarter on quick ground is exactly where we're going to see him to his best ability. I think a mile and a half on quick ground, as we saw in the King George when he recorded that rattling fast time, or a mile and a quarter on with a bit of giving the ground, probably where we see him to his best ability. But there is one at a price if he goes. I'm not too sure he's going to go, and that's the the Globe Trotter Dubai Honor, who of course won out in um, won out in Australia, finished third in the QE2 Cup over in Japan. I just think he's been actually improving. I know he's the age of five now, and he was second in a below par champion stakes to seal away and the ground could be a bit of an issue but I think he's kind of proved that the ground's not too much of an issue in his globe trotting excavations I know over in Australia uh, when he won it was actually um, soft ground that day but even so I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue Tom Marquon won't be on board so it'll be interesting to see who they actually jock up if he goes I'm not too sure if he is 100% going to go because I swear it's about 75 to 1 on the exchange but he's 25 to 1 at the moment I don't think that's a bad price for Dubai Honor because I think he is he screams out for a mile and a quarter but look it's all systems go for my Prospero yeah absolutely I think we're both going to be having a, a win bet on my Prospero um, if Dubai Honor goes it looks like Jack will be having each way play on that and I'll be having a, a go at Sim Camille each way as well remember that you can currently get non-runner no bet with some bookmakers so if you are a fan of Dubai Honor definitely worth going with the non-runner no bet price at this stage I'd say Good time to mention, Jack, and you gave a bit of a reference there with My Prospero is our anti-post flat uh, episodes. Probably in some ways a, a little bit redundant now, but um, you look at some of the horses that we put up in that series. My Prospero for Jack, Prince World, 12 to 1. Jack put this horse up for that race there. Um, we had Blue Rose Sen, who runs this week, and I put her up for the Prix de Diane at 10 to 1. She's currently as short as around sort of 5 to 2, 11 to 4. Uh, we both put up August Rodan for the Derby, and I also had Morge to win the 1,000 Guineas. So, like, it's, it's been a, a very positive series, that, Jack, and, and I know you've also got another one that's going to be running in a race that we preview in a second, but we love the anti-post previews. We don't want to go mad on them, but when we feel like it's the right time to do them, we will, and we've been very successful this year. Yeah, it's been really good fun, actually. Um, it's been nice to actually have a couple of anti-post picks go in for a change, so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah, God, the, the C word will be a few months and then we'll be previewing that. So um, let's move on to the Thursday now and we'll go on to the, the speedball race for the two-year-olds. It's the Norfolk Stakes, an elite status takes on American Rascal, 6-4 to four elite status, American Rascal, 11-4. to four. River Tiber's in here, won't be running 7-1, to one. Fandom, 8-1, to one. The Liffey, 8-1, to one. No Name Mets, 12-1, to one. Bledsoe, 12-1, to one. Democracy and Noche Magica, 12-1. to one. Uh, looking at 14 to 1 and bigger about the rest of them in here. We're back to two horse races potentially here, Jack. Um, elite status, very impressive in the national stakes, but then I went back and watched American Rascals last round, and you can't say that that wasn't impressive either. This is going to be a hell of a burn up. It might be a race, again, you wouldn't want to go mad on either of these favourites because anything can happen. You're comparing English and American form, and it's never easy to do that, but this is going to be some race, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be an absolute cracker, isn't it? Look, I think it's going to be a huge burn up, as you said. American Rascal and Elite Status. I think Elite Status will be sat in American Rascal as the, the American Raiders do try and make all. This is the definition of a watching brief for me. I mean, if you compare juvenile form and the best of times, it's hard enough from Yarmouth to Ripon, but let alone when you're going across the Atlantic. I mean, this will be awfully tough to pit the winner. Elite Status is 6-4. to four. Look, he was remarkably impressive at Sandown. That was a great performance that day to do it from wide as well. Didn't get the rail, but managed to absolutely swoop clear on debut. American Rascals saw that blistering speed, which we see 
from some of the American juveniles. So look, I'm going to sit back and watch it. If I'm going to going to go for one, I think elite status could be very impressive and win this probably by two or three lengths. But I'm not going to be having a a, a bed or a lengths bed. I'll be sitting back and having a watch. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I'd attribute the, the American Radio American Russell, but again, I wouldn't be going absolutely mad with this horse. I just hope that, and it probably won't happen, but I just hope they don't make it a two-horse race, go for a burn-up together and, and completely ruin themselves and set it up for something in behind. I want it to be a good battle between these horses. Um, I, I, you're not going to be shocked if they finish one, two. You're really not, and the market shows that. But I just hope we see a really, really good race and a really special display from at least one of these horses. So looking forward to the Norfolk Stakes. Not a betting heat, but a very good watching brief for Royal Ascot on the Thursday. Let's go on to the Ribblesdale now, shall we? This is a mile and a half for the, uh, the Phillies. A Group 2 event, an infinite Cosmos is 4-1 for the Sir Michael Stout uh, stable. Save the Last Dance, 5-1. to one. Soul Sister, 5-1. to one. Blue Stocking is 11-2. Running Lion, 12-1. to one. Warm Heart, 12-1. to one. Azazat is 14s, along with Village Voice and 16-1 to one and bigger the rest. This is a market, Jack, where there is potential value in the fact that Save the Last Dance, you'd imagine, won't go here. Soul Sister, you'd be shocked if she turned up here. Running Lions running in the Dian this weekend. Like, their potential is a little bit of value. You're going to see a few come out of this. Who would be the one for you? Yeah, it's still a tricky race, isn't it? Look, the Goldstons and the O'Briens have kind of dominated this race in recent years. No Man's Called Lagoon won it last year, but it is a very tricky race. Infinite Cosmos, of course, was well fancied. For the O's before, kind of disappointing last time out behind Soul Sister. So of course, Soul Sister won't be going. For me, I'd say the, the, the difference in price between Warm Heart and Blue Stocking isn't really justified. I'm not too sure if Warm Heart is going to be going. Um, that would be a massive one for me. But look, they're both not really bred to stay this trip. They finished at, uh, I think it was 111% finishing speed, but Warm Heart just got the better of Blue Stocking that day. But I wouldn't be surprised if she actually confirms that form. I know she's nearly double the price that day. Uh, sorry, now. But she's drifting in the market, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's a big sign that she isn't going to go. If she doesn't go, I think Blue Stocking is is the one. It looked like Be Happy might be the Aiden O'Brien contingent, contingent that is actually going. I think the winner may actually come, though, from that race. And I think it will, will either be Warm Heart or Blue Stocking, depending if Warm Heart goes. Yeah, I think, I think Blue Stocking is the, the most interesting. I can imagine this horse being much shorter in the market as soon as the entries come out, once a few of these have come out of the race. The one I think would be worth having a bet on non-run or no bet, potentially, is Azazat for the world team. Um, this horse was third at the start of the season behind Save the Last Dance. And I'd probably say Hayes would like that ride back again. It, it, I think he, he came too late, left it way too late, came flying home and just couldn't quite get home was beaten by a very good horse but then came out and beat Queenstown in really good style at Leopardstown um, one by four plus lengths and uh, these were on soft conditions but look by Camelot I've got a feeling he, he's not going to mind the quicker going he could actually be just as good if not better um, sorry she could be a, a lot better and 14 to 1 is a, a big price it's one non runner no bet this race you're going to see a lot come out and I'd be worried that she could be one of them but if Wells got his uh, eyes set on Ascot I'm hoping that uh, she'll be turning up. So I will be with Azazat and Blue Stocking. Jack, your Blue Stocking and? A warm heart, if warm. she knows. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like we say, look, if they go so at this time when we're recording this preview, unfortunately, we don't have the full declaration, so it's not as easy. Let's move on to the final race that we look at then, which is the 4.20 on Thursday, a two-and-a-half mile Ascot Gold Cup. And Coltrane and Elder Elderoff hold the top of the market at three to one. Emily Dickinson seven to one. Courage Monami ten to one. I think still that's an awfully short price. Subjectivist is ten to one. Your beer is ten to one. Broom twelve to one. Fourteen to one. And bigger out about the rest of them. Um, Jack, you part Coltrane eight to one on the Antipost series, which is absolutely superb. Um, and we also have another Antipost angle. In fact, we did our Royal Ascot preview, and we both put up El Habib. Um, I put this horse up on Twitter at 40s and, and now 20s and I still think this horse is far too big a price. A lot's been said about this horse being yeah, a, a good each way bet in here from a lot of the preview evenings I've been at as well. And I mean, I'll make the case quickly again, but this horse ran in the Cigaro. Look, the ground was good to soft. I think this horse will just appreciate really good quick going. I think the extended trip on breeding suggests it shouldn't be a positive but I just think this horse is crying out for a longer trip was staying on so well in that Cigaro didn't get the best of rides in my opinion I think um, if Azzini's on a board again he's going to try and make amends and it's far too big a price at 20 to 1 the one that I think is definitely the scary horse in the race is Subjectivist is I don't know what we're going to see from this horse because 
He has slowly looked better and better run from run since he's made his return. And if he's taken another big step forward, we know what he did in this race a few couple of years ago. He is very talented. I think 10 to 1, which is a, a bit of a scary price. If you saw some money on the day, you'd expect them to think that he is up to winning a race like this. And 10 to 1 is far too big. So I'm going to have El Habib and Subjectivist in the Ascot Gold Cup. Jack, you've already got Cold Trainers and Antipost Angle. You've already got El Habib. Are they the two you're going to stay with? Um... Yeah, but oh, you be, you be, you be. Oh, no. He scares me, Sam. He scares me big time. Stepping up for a mile and a half, fourth in the Alpine Stakes onto this two and a half mile trip. It really does scare me. Not bred to, to see out the trip whatsoever. But look, he's a top class Group One horse. We've seen the likes of Broom go and do it out in May Down. I just think it depends how quick they go out front. If they don't go at much of a pace, I think your beer is definitely going to be on the periphery. He's 10 to 1. There's not too much juice in the price, but at the same time, it's not a terrible price, is it? He is probably, I'd say, the best horse in the race, but it's just, can he do it over this trip? So that's a very interesting one for me. As you said, I'm, uh, we, we sat pretty with um, Coltrane and El Habib. I'd still probably uh, edge towards Coltrane. I think he's definitely a battle of a two and a half mile trip. Shouldn't be a problem. The quick ground shouldn't be a problem if it is quick on the day. And I think El Habib, as you said, Stepping up to the street is definitely worth a go. The uh, the old Derby entrant from last year went off at 200 to 1 has turned into a potential Gold Cup winner. Goodness me, how's that happen? But um, no, just on the point of um, Eldar Eldorov, I think it was just the run at Yorkshire was almost just, I'm sometimes subject to it as well. You see a horse staying on, you think, boom, step him up and trip, just like that. But I mean, stepping up from a mile and three quarters, I know he can, of course, stay two miles, but he didn't really show that at Ascot in in October, did he? Because I know that the ground was a little bit testing that day. But look, he finished 7th of 8th that day. He did have a long season. But that being said, I mean, he's got a, he's got a lot more to prove to me than um, the likes of, I think, um, El Habib stepping up in trip. I'm not too sure this is going to be down the street. And for me, he is definitely too short. He'd probably be one of the, the lays of the meeting for me at the moment. So I think I'd be against Eldorov, definitely. And I'll be with Coltrane in the field. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. I'm looking forward to El Habib. We've been talking about this horse for for a couple of months now, and I really hope he can run a massive race for us in the Ascot Gold Cup. Um, what we're going to do on each of these previews, like I said, it's a two-part um, series, this. So what we'll do is we'll give any other bets for the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, as, long as well as a nap um, for the, the first three days. Jack, what else have you got on, on the, well, the cards for the first three days? So, I think the Royal Hunt Cup is kind of the place where we need to start, isn't it? Um, Astro King, of course, put out anti post at 12 to 1. Price has kind, of, uh, kind of collapsed a tiny bit. He's now at 10 to 1, 9 to 1. I don't think he's going to shorten anymore. Um, the money's come for Porosso, though. Goodness me, and he's definitely off a handy mark. So, you can see why the price has collapsed there. He's 8 to 1 on the day. But there's probably actually one more if he does go for the Royal Hunt Cup for me. And that's all the way down um, at 33 to 1. It's Linus Point, who's just been very consistent as of late. It was second last time out. He's been staying on. He's just a very consistent four year old. I know he's gone up in the weights a few pounds, but I still think he's a, a big enough price if he does go. So Linus Point for me would be the other one at 33 to 1. Okay, yeah, um, I completely agree. The Royal Hunt Cup is the, the place to be. Um, and. I'm going to stick with the horse that I put up on the Antipost series, and it's Dunham. Um, loads of people have come over to me since I've put this up at a race course and said, this horse, I've gone back and looked at his form, it is so fascinating. What Natalia Lupini has done with this horse is absolutely crazy. The horse has been just been running in big field handicaps, as consistent as ever, hasn't been out of the front two. Off a of mark of 97, I just have a feeling that this horse could still be going forward. It's going to be under bet on the day. It may actually drift with a trainer like Natalia Lupini. She's not going to be a popular trainer in this market issue. There's no doubt about that. But it'd be some story if she did go and win it. Currently 20 to 1 Dunham. I don't think that's the worst price in the world. I completely get the Parato angle. The price has now completely collapsed. I think 14 to 1 earlier in the week and now down to to 8-1 to one best price, but some bookmakers even shorter at around 7. So, yeah, completely get that angle. He could, he could potentially go off even shorter if well-backed on the day. That wouldn't be a shock, but I'll be with Dunham in the Royal Hunt Cup. And the one 
that I'm not going to be putting up, but I think our viewers should hear about is I was at a preview evening last night in Chelsea, and Joe Chambers was there, who's racing manager for Rich Ritchie. If Vauban runs in the Copper Horse Handicap, the 6-10 on the opening day, currently 9-4. to Ryan Moore's dropped up for Willie Mullins in the Rich Ritchie colours. They are pretty confident that that should be going in and could be very well handicapped. So we'll have to wait and see whether that horse makes it into that field. But yeah, it was very, very uh, positively talked up by Joe Chambers. Um, best bet for the opening three days. I don't know, do you want to do a best bet for each day or should we do a best bet for the opening three days? Um, I'd say let's do a best bet for the opening three days. Well, why not? Fine. Okay. Uh, oh, let me try and kick things off with a best bet, shall I? Uh, I'd either have at a price Sim Camille each way in the Prince of Wales is, and if I wanted to go for one at a shorter price, I think River Tiber at eleven to four would actually be a bet. I've got this feeling this horse could run really well. So I'd have Sim Camille as a, an each way play and I'd have River Tiber at a shorter price at 11 to 4 as the, the best bet over the first three days. What about yourself? Oh, just quickly as well, in the Royal Hunt Cup, it was actually point Linus, not Linus point. I mean, saying blue point too many times this season scarred me. <laughs> but I looked at just point at the end, he's 50 to 1, not 32 to 1 after having a look. But no, if we're going for a nap and an each way play, I'd say the nap has to be my Prospero. Um, I have to kind of fly the flag for him after putting him up all year and probably the each way player i think like infantry could actually go pretty pretty close in the queen Anne. so it's a bit of a rogue one but it'd be um it'd be my prospero and light infantry yeah completely agree with my prospero as well so let's hope we can land a, a few winners on the opening three days um we're going to be back tomorrow evening uh, it depends on you watching this but we'll be back friday evening with a preview of the final two days we won't have all the entries but we'll have a few selections for the big group races and a couple of the handicaps for maybe um, so look forward to previewing that as always like subscribe get those comments in let us know who you're backing at Royal Ascot we'd love to hear who you're going to be on during the week and we will give some shout outs after Ascot for any winners that people have um, Jack first three days all done and dusted really looking forward to it you're going to be joining me at the racing post for the week doing some video production work we've got some great content coming from the racing post that week as well we have the good morning shows what a shout in the know in the podcast really looking forward to getting stuck into that it's racing fever jack you're going to be well involved yeah it really is i can't wait look see up in london with you working on that should be great fun i mean as you say look racing fever whether it's cheltenham goodwood ascot yeah i just can't wait can't wait. Looking forward to previewing the final two days. Thanks for watching and we will see you then.